Hello comic book fans, here's Earl Grey with my third video about Grant's Bats, the Batman stories written by Grant Morrison. Like its predecessor, Batman and Son, the Black Glove is available as a single thinner trade. But as I said it in the last episode, I would recommend picking up the deluxe edition of the Black Glove right here. It collects both Batman and Son, drawn by Andy Kubert, and the Black Glove. I saw a similar, if not same edition, called Batman and Son. Um, so it's a bit confusing t sometimes. I recommend look to look twice on the content description before you buy a particular edition. The Black Glove in itself consists of two clearly distinct parts. The first three chapters, drawn by J. H. Williams, are art and story-wise one of my favorite Batman stories ever. In polar opposition to what everybody tells you about Morrison's stories, and most of the time rightfully so, these three chapters are quite un-Morrison-like. They are easy to understand, the short story arc isn't too convoluted, it's clearly arranged and it sure helps that the setting is defined. Everything takes place on one island. There's no fancy confusing Morrison stuff like time travel here, just some flashbacks. Right there, the cover of the first issue of The Black Glove harkens back to stories that are reprinted in the Black Case Book. The Black Case Book is a collection of obscure Batman stories. Most of them were used by Morrison as an inspiration for his Batman stories. He took whole story elements, events from Batman's past and imagined their ramifications in Batman's present and or future. Morrison himself compiled this anthology as a compendium for us, his dear readers, for giving us background information and making us more able to fully comprehend his own stories. I really can recommend this nice little trait. It's not necessary to understand the gist of Morrison's plot, but it helps a lot and I enjoyed the whimsical, ridiculous stories. Most of all, Morrison used two stories as a starting point for Batman's incorporated run. One of them is the Batman of all nations. In this story, from Detective Comics number 215 from 1955, the writer Edmund Hamilton already phrases the basic idea. Lashing out at the lawless, crushing the cunning conspiracies of crime, shielding the innocent, it's small wonder that Batman and Robin are the world's most famous lawmen. But in other parts of the world, are other crime fighters who have taken Batman as their model. And when fate brings all these lawmen of other lands to Gotham City on a mission, danger looms as the underworld hurls dramatic defiance at the Batman of all nations. In this story, you have already the knight with his sidekick from England the musketeer from France, the legionnaire from Italy, Gaucho from South America and the ranger from Australia. With the exception of the ranger, they all reappeared in a Superman and Batman team up in the Club of Heroes from World's Finest Comics number 89 from 1957 again written by Edmund Hamilton. It's the first appearance of John Mayhew, well-known philanthropist who built a luxurious clubhouse as a gift for the heroes. 
at least in this old story, he seems to be a real nice guy. The other three heroes that were summoned and included in Morrison's story are Wingman, Man of Bats and his son Raven. They had their debut in two other stories from the Black Case book. Wingman appeared for the first time in A Partner for Batman in Batman 65 from 1951, written by old Bill Finger. Man of Bats and his son Little Raven had their debut in Batman Indian Chief in Batman 86 from 1954, written by Franz Heron. Back to the Black Love. Grant Morrison arranges here a sort of a class reunion for the Batman of All Nations slash the Club of Heroes, featuring Wingman and the Man of Bats and Raven, who calls himself now Raven Red. Some of them aged in a better way than others, especially the flubby legionnaire is far away from his dream figure. This basic idea of a meeting of old-time heroes, some of them clearly past their prime, was played out already in Morrison's Seven Soldiers of Victory run, in the part which was also drawn by J. H. Williams back then. And it is the first approximation of Morrison himself towards that what will become Bruce Wayne's Batman Incorporated later on. But it's made very clear that this Batman Incorporated idea goes back actually decades in Batman's history. On this island of the mysterious millionaire, the same one that founded the Club of Heroes back in the day, our heroes await their host who doesn't show up and seems to be a far more ambiguous character than it was told in the old casebook story. It soon becomes clear that this meeting won't be such a sponsored fun ride at all, at least after the heroes get killed one by one, the atmosphere gets a bit more tense. It's a tight arrangement, full of suspense, hints and blind alleys. Think of maybe Alfred Hitchcock plus capes, especially since some of the witty banter that loosens up a bit of the sinister atmosphere reminds me of some old screwball comedy movies. Did I mention J. H. Williams' art? It's fantastic as ever. Brilliant arrangements to depict action sequences. His signature experiments with the panel grid are all brilliant as always. And on top of it all, the flashback sequences in Golden Age style with artificial misprint effects and stuff. Oh, it brings tears to my eye. Simply gorgeous. Unfortunately, art and story are taking a break in being gorgeous thereafter. Art-wise, we have Tony as Daniel. I'm not a big fan of his art. It's solid most of the time, but never really spectacular. I know that he has his fans, so it's probably a matter of taste like always. But after William's astonishing layouts, Tony Daniels' art, in its average normalness, is quite sobering and anticlimactic. Unfortunately, Morrison isn't at his best in these issues neither. We learn that the three so-called ghosts of Batman, from Batman and Son, were the result of an experiment done by the police. They wanted to create crime fighters after the model of Batman, just in case he won't be always there to help them. 
This story part is actually an original one because it, a quite clever one because it's another rendition of the basic theme of Batman Incorporated. Creating a group of Batman as a crime fighting task force. But as we have seen already in Batman and Son, the experiment failed dramatically. By the way, one of the ghosts of Batman, the Bane Muscle Monster One, has his predecessor in the Batman creature from Batman number 162 from 1964, reprinted in the Black Case book as well. Over a big part of the Daniels part, Batman is in a delusional state and this delusion takes over the storytelling. So like in a fever dream, it jumps back and forth in time. We get some hints here and there. For an example about a strange isolation experiment done with Bruce a long time ago that harkens back to a black um, casebook story as well. Maybe with a more fitting artist, this delusion part could have been a treat, but done the Daniels way, it's a bit tiring and the special appearance of Batmite is really a comic relief for me, though I can understand the bewilderment of some reviewers about this guest character, who of course had appeared in the Black Case book as well. But anyhow, it's a wild psychic ride that leaves us wondering what will happen next. And of course, there will happen a lot since we are still just in the beginning of the run. So, thanks for listening and watching. Until next time, goodbye.